Hi in 9810. Uh, now that you've finished your CAD drawings for your footstool and your uh, bedside table, um, we're going to move on now and start creating our files for our veneer. Um, and the veneer that we're going to be using um, is about one mil thick or, or less and they're just strips of timber all in different colours. It kind of looks like this. And we've put a sample of them in the workshop and we're going to be using that to create some simple marquetry. What's marquetry? It's decorative designs in your timber, okay, where you've got your footstool and then you cut out this area um, for the shape of your picture and you put the veneer in that shape, okay? So you can do simple things like a leaf, you can do these triangle shapes with these three L's in it, um, there's a star option there, these are fairly complex, so I'd steer away from that for our first time. Um, there's a few more simple ones down here star, heart, letters, you could even just do swirls or, or simple triangles, squares, repetitive shapes. There's a complex one that's still possible. Um, yeah, you can see how much more complex they get using different types, but I mean we, we attempt these when we've done it a fair few times, okay? For our first one we're looking at doing something nice and simple. Alright, so how do we do this? Well, we use something we've used before already. Light burn. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is draw the size or a rectangle to the size of our top of our footstool or our bedside table. So for year nine, um, we want to make this rectangle 350 long and the height at 190. Enter. Okay. That's the exact size of our footstool. I'm just going to move that down to the bottom left so it's in the origin. And I'm going to turn that output off. Okay, it is just a placeholder that's not going to get cut. Now we've got some simple shapes through here you can use to design with. And I might do something like this. And then go copy paste. Might move that one over there. We can, you can move it using that middle one. And I'll paste another one. And I might want that one there. I might see what this looks like if I spin that around. Nah, I don't like that. I'm just going to delete that one and copy paste that so I know it's perfectly straight. I'll put that there. Okay. Now to align these perfectly, you can click one, then hold shift and click the other one. I'm going to align those through the center that way. And they're going to group it. So you can click this button here to group selection. And then this one. And oops. Hold shift multi-select. I'm going to center them long ways as well. Doesn't look right. It is okay. Now I'm just going to center it to the whole thing. That way, and I might even click that, click that, and group that as all one thing. And now click that and center it that way as well. Cool. Alrighty. Now these, I'm going to make a different colour. So now I can turn that layer on and that layer would get cut on the laser cutter. But I actually want to first cut this out, so route that out using the CNC router. So we're going to go File, Save As, we'll throw that in our tech folder. The light burn file, um, file, that's very, very important. And then we're going to export it for the CNC router. Okay, and we need it to be, to be a DXF. So it might be like this to start with. Change it to the um, DXF. Okay. Veneer test to wood. Save yours as your name, please. 
Alrighty, and at that point you would email me that file. And it will get opened up in QuickCam 2D. And it wants to know the size of our timber. So 350 by 190 by 19. Click OK. That's the size of our footstool. And we're just going to go File, uh, Import. Yeah, there we go. It's already on DXF. And I can see my veneer test to woods. It gives me a preview and I can click Open. Pretty cool. So um, now what I can do, I should just be able to delete that. And it leaves me with my three shapes. And down here in Cam, I can create some tool parts. I can tell the router where to go. Okay. So we just save it. Uh, veneer test to woods. And it will be a MCM file. In my stage five folder, save. And it wants to know what material, so it's a softwood. Next, um, what do you want to cut out and how? Well, we're going to do a area clearance. And the tool bit we're using in the router is the three millimeter flat. And we select the areas that are going to get cut out and we tell it how deep. Okay, so I'm only going to go half a mil because it's completely fine if our veneer sits up a little high. We just sand it down. So only half a mil. We click calculate and these blue lines show us the path the router is going to take. So it's going to work from the outside around to the inside. Click OK. It's got that toolpath there. We click next. We check our datum point is the bottom left. We click finish. And that is now giving me a FNC file type, which I can plug into the router. I'm just gonna put that in my part there. Okay. And I can start that on the router. Okay, so I'm going to pause this video here. I'm going to set up the router. I'm going to start running one and video it and add it onto the end of this video. So once this opens up uh, in QuickCam 2D, on the school's computer, um, it can be sent straight to the router software. Okay, it converts it all to this code and it all runs on XYZ coordinates. And you can see the things that we've put in there. So our start depth, our final depth, our tool, and our XY coordinates that it automatically creates. We don't have to do anything there. Okay. Uh, you'll see that scroll bar. There's over 4,500 lines of code there. We can now connect to the router. That's the virtual one that you can go through if you wanted to test it without being connected. Or if you press the other button on there, there we go, that one. Select real machine. It's going to connect to the router that's right next to this screen. Now I can home that router. You can see those numbers changing. The physical router just moved to its home position. Okay, it went, it went up and back to the back corner. And when I click this job button, I can now manually control the router with a keypad. And if I press the across button on my keypad, it moves the router across. Now in this section here, um, I'll do all this part for you, but here you just have to tell the machine what cut is in it, 
and what tool it is. So I need to make sure it's on a different tool that's got a diameter of 3mm so it knows it's in there. The length of the whole piece and the flute length is the part where the actual cutting edge is on the router bit. Yeah, there we go. Okay, and you can see there, I just click that button and it's got one preloaded that says end mill on it. So that means the base of the cutter is flat. Now I'm just going to write the name in there. I'll go over to our work offsets. The L bracket on the actual bed of the CNC router, there's a little L bracket there and it wants to know where it is using a coordinate of X, Y, Z. Now this is where I have to use the keypad on the computer and I'm just moving around left, right, up and down. Over to the bottom left hand corner of my timber that's in there. Okay, so here we go with maybe this just by hand, so I'm doing that using the keypad and I'm going to bring it along and we're trying to line up the tip of that road a bit with our timber oops, too far okay, and I can come around to this part of the road here and I can see if I'm in line Oops, wrong one. That's pretty close. Okay. Now I'm just going to pause this video so I can get it right. And that's what I'm just doing at the moment. I've moved that all around. I've got it to the right spot. And that X, Y, Z, I hit that to set that to home. Okay, that's the zero position. It now knows where its start point is. Okay, I'm just double checking. I've got it on the right tool. Got it on the end mill. And I've got my lengths in there. definitely have those set to zero. Okay, I can send my router home now based on the L bracket it knows where to go. checking my feed rates nice and high at the 5000 and I can manually control that on the router as well I can make it faster so now I'm just going to close that uh, that's a stop rewind and play button and that basically makes sure my codes at the very start and I can hit play and it's asking me am I sure I really want to run it and go yep and in real time now the router is turned on and it's starting to move on my timber. You'll see that in the next video. So there you go guys, you can see now that that's going about half mil deep in the timber. I think this can have a slight bow to it, so it might look deeper in some places, but that's all right, I'll just sand that after it. I can speed that up manually here. There's this um, feed rate dial. So I can just turn that up a little bit quicker. Mm -hmm. uh, come back and see what's here, and that okay. Okay, so I'm going to let that run, and uh, the next part of this video, you'll see it'll be finished. Um, and I'll take you back to the light burn software and show you how to cut the veneers to fit in place on that.
All right, guys. So I came back to the laser cutter. Um, this shape here, um, I made. I had to do an offset um, just to make sure one fit inside the other. Um, so if I zoom right out here, it's a bit annoying actually. Um, this was the original shape. So on your original shape, there we go. Topsy five. Have it. On your original shape here, you select it and then there's a tool over here for offset. Now when that pops up, you need to make sure that you've set it for an inward uh, offset and just point one with a round corner. Okay, and you click OK um, and I zoom right in here. Jeez, my mouse. Hang on a second guys, sorry. You can see it's put one on the inside and I can grab that inside one um, and turn it to a different layer type you'll see it and it's the red one we want to do now okay so then we've got the slightly smaller shape but still on that red layer there the, the settings to cut through the veneer are 10 speed and 100 power have it turned on for outset and our support 29 mil because it gets stuck down on a bit of ply just to hold it in place um, and then it's good to go okay um, i already cut mine out so you can see that just there there's my three pieces and my piece of timber is finished from the cnc router so i've just dabbed some glue in there and i really got into the corners really well and now it's just a case of placing these in there Okay, and just a light press in the whole thing. You want to get nice pressure all the way across that to get the air out. Because the last thing you want is this bubbling up. Okay, once you think you've got that pressed down really well, it'd be a good idea um, to put a smaller bit of timber on top of there. Um, so I'll just use that for now. And then run in a bit of tape across that just to make sure it's holding down really well. And you just repeat that process for these two um, and then that little lip you can still see we just sand that off okay nice and easy i'll show you what the finished product looks like all right guys there's the finished product well not finished but that's it after all pieces have been stuck in it doesn't matter that there's a bit of glue beading over the edges because that'll all get sanded off okay and then you'll do your edge treatment around there with the trim router Okay, so I do have about a uh, quarter of a mil there to sand down. Alright, looking pretty cool.